Hello everybody and welcome to week six of King of the Hill. We have today in the Red Trunks playing on the southeast side of Faymonville Approach Theodosius, a player who is careful, strategic, and very, very good at drawing out long games and taking the best opportunities. He's definitely been one to watch. He's beaten Nagano, and uh, now he's up against a pretty formidable opponent. He's not is up against a pretty formidable opponent. And that for, for opponent is Talisman. He's in the north side, he's playing as blue, Soviets. Um, I'm not used to these intros being quite so long and wordy. Dan, you put me on the spot here. I feel I have to try and equal what you were saying. And uh, I wasn't ready for it. Usually we just say, here's one guy and here's the other guy. But uh, the, the Cavalcades he's got, I mean, Theo's currently king, Theo. He won last uh, week and he got, we had Saw Nagano who was five games into his uh, his empire and Theo usurped him. It's a fantastic game at the end of last episode. Uh, and Talisman's looking to do the exact same thing today. Yeah, sorry, sorry to put you on the spot there. It was a, a style breaker. So, it was. Yeah. It was a, a style breaker. <laughs> it's a thing I'm experimenting with at the moment. <laughs> How much can I rattle AE at the start of a cast? Um, Watch like randomly mute me or just uh, start just sending me. Just play music like high pitch. to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. We've got the Grenadiers. Um, they've done a great job of solidifying the centre, the Pioneers. Look at the amount of barbed wire that's been going down. Very good play from Theo to try and uh, just basically make the central ground his. Meanwhile, Talisman's gone north. He's solidifying the fuel points. He's got the conscripts branching out. So it's very much going the way you want, one would expect it. That's uh, Theo with the strategic. And Talisman is probably going to build a heavy conscript army. He's very well known for doing that. And uh, we've seen him. Was it a 13 conscript build once against a helping hands? Yeah, he, we have seen it. He likes to utilize commanders uh, that have like the, the rapid cons uh, conscription. Where you're kind of like the more conscripts you lose, the more you get. It's kind of steamrolls into this huge manpower army, and, and Talisman's very good at um, at utilizing an army of that side and, and still keeping on top of the manpower. But you touched on a really interesting thing at the start of the game, which is the direction that Theo has taken here, because of course going on the left-hand side on this map leaves you open to the strategic cutoff, uh, which I've just brought up on the screen now. Now it's something that if your opponent is pushing down the center of the map and you get cut off there you will lose all your resources so uh it's it's kind of like you have some really nice you know houses and things like that you can put mgs in and defend and it, it's great but at the same time you are high risk of losing uh, your territories to the decap right now the conscripts have stayed inside that circle keeping it just capped for now how are you the reinforcements pioneers gonna have to get out of there four man grenadier being backed up by a healthier squad here come more conscripts to help out they've got to stay within that capping circle as dan riley mentioned it's the thing keeping his entire map control <laughs> together and he's lost it just barely that was yes yeah, slightly off the circle with the conscripts he was actually present for it uh, and not able to to prevent it so that's unfortunate he's only going to lose a, a few resources and of course talisman is capping the left side fuel that's going to be quite secure for a while um so not a big loss there at all uh, just a little bit of a, a misplay it was it was all right you know it could have been a lot worse i guess and uh, one thing to note theodosius did decide to keep the mg in the house some um, possibly more aggressive players may have brought the mg to back up and try and cause a pin but theo is mindful of maybe he would have been flanked by a conscript and he just likes to go the steadier option which can be very successful in coming here as a lot of players are like that love nest helping hans nagano to name a few and uh, you know that kind of play can win tournaments and can win big games so uh, it's definitely nothing to be um, criticized too heavily no i agree look at this bait here the engine is waiting for a machine gun to run around the side and get in his house theo hasn't <gasps> spotted it in time even though a model did uh detect the engineers there the flames open up immediately doing huge flame bad. damage to the mg this could go down a this could go down. One more. Oh, just gets out of there. MP40s of the Pioneer to the rescue. If it wasn't for that Pioneer, he could have lost the MG there. Yeah, that was uh, that was unfortunate, just not looking at that place. There was only a couple of seconds he could have corrected that, so it's not a huge error uh, really there. He had already clicked on the building for the MG to run. So really good by Talisman, though. Uh, really, really good to predict that the MG would come into that building that way. 
uh, just kind of gives you an idea of, of how Talisman's playing this game right now. Talisman build order wise has gone for four conscripts. He's going for no more. He's got on the field infirmary up in base. So that uh, indicates to me he's not going for one of his spammy um, conscript based strategies where he, he gets loads. He's going for a traditional Soviet build order seen by many other players. Um, so be expecting tier three possibly. Uh, he's going tier two right now. Um, he might get something from there, but be expecting a more traditional build from him in this game. It's quite nice that uh, Theo has matched the the kind of conscript build. Do you know what I mean? He's he's made an effort to uh, to get four Grens with his machine gun, and uh, that's going to help him out significantly. Because at the moment he he was suffering from being overrun. Um, you know, it's, it's it's difficult. If he can get in green cover positions and have good engagements against these conscripts, if he can get healing up in his base with this. Uh, he'll be able to stay on a lot of parts of the map uh, for a long time. Um, your keyboard's coming through a lot, by the way. Sorry, dude. I'm, 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 I'm. No, it's fine. Um, he'll be able to stay on the map for, for a long period of time and get those resources that he needs to start teching up to that really important Ostia Tier 2. Indeed. Uh, Ostia Tier 2 is going to be very important. It's going to be the saving grace because Tier 3 is now constructed for Talisman back in base. He's got a decent amount of fuel, just under 50. He'll be getting to 70 in no time at all, so be expecting a T70 for the 8 minute mark. Um, and if we've got no pack on the field, we all know how that goes. Nice rifle made, nice dodge in turn. Good micro from Talisman, as one would always expect. Uh, obviously, um, a heavy scrim partner of players like Devem, um, GB Hooligan, etc. He, he's a very well practiced player when it comes to aggressive, incisive play. Um, and we haven't seen too much of that quite yet because Theo, in, in general, is just so solid. It's not really allowed Talisman the chance to be hyper aggressive quite yet. But uh, just check out the micro, check out the rifle nade dodging. Mm. He's moving in all over the map at the same time. And it's a question can Theo keep up with this? I think Theo can. I mean, you look at the kind of map control that's been taken back. Theo's doing uh, well, do you know what I mean? Just to push this off. Four cons can be very overwhelming at the start. And, you know, the only downside is he's lost 100 VPs whilst all of this has been going on, uh, which will kind of play against him as the game moves forward. Uh, we do see that decap, by the way, that decap we were talking about earlier. Theo losing all of his resources to that decap. And this is the risk of playing the left side. Uh, that he's taken. Now he has to spend time capping this and going to defend the decap of his resources on the front lines. So, so just, uh, just to okay. further clarify what, what Dan's on about with this uh, strategic decap, obviously if you look at the tactical map, there's one on each side, but the one on the south side is protected by the central house. Um, so it's a lot easier to defend, in my opinion. This map's still a great map. It's still very well balanced overall. In the vetoes, um, in auto match prove it, it's the least vetoed 1v1 map. Um, what do you think about this, though, Dan? We've got the, the scout car coming out at the exact same time as the T70. Hmm, that leaves him a little bit vulnerable. It does. Um, I mean, both the T70 uh, and the... the the scout car can do well if they're supported by infantry because the T70 is not going to go for the scout car if there's infantry around uh, for fear of the Faust. So it's not like a it's not a, a flat out win for for Talisman right now. Be interested though. Theodosis has locked in his commander choice with mobile defense, uh, so he may rely on the Puma to come Check in in one CP's time. Check out this inside the house. By the way, you'll see the remnants of the MG42 team with um, flames all around them. So he's not getting that back. It was not just a D crew, it was a D crew inside the house. The MG42 is now down and out. That's, uh, that's a tough loss for him because he needs the suppression against uh, against these endless infantry. We're seeing uh, tripwire flares go off here from the conscripts. That's going to let him know when something is coming to cap uh, VP on the left hand side. And I, I've always had. Uh, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a thing -y for, for players that use tripwire flares and things like that because it's just great intel. It's so cheap, uh, and you know you just know you get a little ping that tells you your opponent is going that direction. It's a great uh, ability that, that conscripts, well, a couple of the Soviet units have that is just widely underused. Talisman has 200 munitions in the bag at the moment. He's not only laying tripwires, he's laying um, mines with his Vet2 engineers right now. 
in build order terms. Uh, he's gotten the Zis out, which will be great against the uh, scout car, because the scout car won't want to be where the T70 is. And it'll probably fall into a trap, and that's that maybe what he's intending with that one. Mm. Let's talk about the commander choices. We've had a uh, guard motor coordination tactics for Talisman, and then Theo with the mobile defense. What do you make of that? Um, I mean, Theo seems... Mobile defense always seems a bit responsive to me. It kind of gives me the impression that Theo is not confident he's had resources in the start of the game. It kind of suggests he thinks he's on the back foot. Uh, Talisman, I think, is picking a very, very strong commander. You know, um, he's got the conscripts out already. He's already got the AT gun. The guards and the uh, HM, uh, HM120 are only going to, you know, just further help disrupt anything that the Austin has. We're seeing an MG come out. A mortar would just would, would just be so catastrophic. <laughs> um, it really like would. Raining shots down over time on the MG. So it's he actually has gone for the guards. I didn't think he needed that that level of AT to be honest. But. I just think the scout car was a little bit of a, an odd choice. It's got zero kills. It's uh, stopped the pack coming out. It's seeded a lot of map control and he continues to do that. T70 being played excellently, keeping units at arms reach, just taking pot shots at them. And um, it's, one, it's one of those things. Nice rifle nade finally hits. Two man conscript has to get out of there. Could have been a fatality. Indeed it is. Thanks to the MG42. Great work by Theo there. You know, I was going to commend uh, Talisman for his micro ground attacking through the hedgerows. In fact, this has gone amazingly for Theo. He gets the wipe on the conscript squad. Now the surprise Ooh. boomers come in. Doctrine choice revealed. One more shot will take down that T70. Oh. It is down. And out. And However, anti-tank grenade from the conscript. We've got guards backing them up. MG42 still there, so he can't go down the south side of that hedge. Has to go the north side. The MG's got the angle. Has it, though? The MG is in a perfect position to defend against guards pushing into this. The only damage, I think, is that conscripts could come in and get the second AT nade, but there isn't much uh, that it's going to be able to do. This Puma will get away with the prize, and Talisman now is on the back foot after this. That was a very quick turn of affairs. It wasn't RNG. It was just great play by Theo. He finally was able to land one of those um, rifle nades. This, he used the cover of the bushes, and it was the turning point that really has sparked um, the resurgence of Theodosios in this game. Yeah, I mean, the, the mobile defense as a doctrine is kind of that one that you, you need to pick it to give yourself, you know, you, you basically use it to even the game again. From this point on, um, I don't know if it's wise for him to stick with the Pumas, um, but at the very least, he's he's managed to give himself a chance to get map control back and maybe go back into standard teching, uh, which I'll be interested to see if he goes for that. A lot of players uh, don't. I think, yeah, it's viable um, to, to go Pumas, but you have to be a little bit lucky and you have to, you know, get, get those really great movements off on your opponent's better late game armor uh, they are viable oh, no. but you have oh. <laughs> you sorry noises. the pioneer hit a mine on uh, the strategic point left of center vp it then retreated narrowly missing another mine that was placed by talisman early that would have been a squad wipe but it was it was so close um, all right really. i was looking at a different end of the screen was trying to work out what it was you'd seen and I was hoping you were going to say, like, mine and another mine. <laughs> it nearly like... was. <laughs> oh, right. There, there you go. Fair enough. We've got uh, Conscripts try trying to retake the center. Sandbags coming up. I wonder what he's going to go for. Yeah, he is indeed. He's got the mechanized armor company just built right now. Uh, he's saving his fuel resources. He's just hit 80. Uh, and let's see what he goes for here. And let's face it, it's most likely going to be a T-34-85. Yeah, it's... Uh... He's got the AT, so uh, it's it's not like he needs the, the SU-85 or anything. He's, he's got to focus on these infantry-to-infantry -infantry engagements, because now he's outmatched. He's completely outmatched by infantry. Pushing the field should be hard for him. Uh, he's brought out the mortar, uh, which suggests he's going to try and aim for resources on the right-hand side, uh, trying to knock the MG out of the building there. Um, but this is tough. We're going to see Talisman... Uh, play Soviets from the back foot here, and if anyone's interested Talking in picking up how, this is a good player to watch. 
Talking about mortars, we've got the mortars, a bigger brother coming down the field. 120 millimeter, pretty much like mobile howitzer. <laughs> the death hammer from the sky above. Um, it can sometimes be the best of weapons and sometimes be absolutely useless. You never know what quite know what game it's going to have. No, it, it's very. Uh... It's probably the best of all the mortars, uh, just for squad wipes alone. It does a hell of a lot of damage, uh, AOE, when those shells land. I like land. mortars in this game now, Dan. I think everyone's got something to offer um, in its own way. I mean, you know, you've got the, the great rate of fire of the Wehrmacht mortar, the, the different AOE profile of the US one, but it has to be a bit closer to really make it work. Mm. And then you've got the 120mm, which fires nuclear bombs, which I think is interesting. Well, I'll, I'll definitely say this about mortars in this game. Um, I still think that in terms of having an ability, uh, austere mortars do have the best one. They have it for artillery as well, which is counter barrage, right? And so as soon as an indirect fire unit fires, if it's in with, uh, sorry, within range of that mortar, you know, the austere mortar will fire back very accurately. Uh, same with artillery, like it will counter fire, it will track it, and it, it actually does a lot of damage and it's very effective and again just very, very underused. Interesting play from Theo there, he had a Grenadier out in the open, he decided to just keep it um, in the medium cover because he thought he could win that battle due to the LMG. Uh, just something to watch if you're a new guy and you, you, you find some of these gun battles interesting, it's often based on the weapon they have, so you can't fire, fire the LMG on the move, so sometimes it may be better to just stick it out and stay in the same position to get that increased uh, DPS from the LMG. The Talisman is still being super aggressive there with that uh, strategic decap on the resources again. He's still dodging rifle nades from Theo, uh, just getting loads and loads of ground done. Theo is struggling to hold his territory. Uh, the VP counts dropped below 300 as well, and we have our T-3485 come onto the field. So this is uh it's gonna be interesting it's it's definitely an interestingly pitched battle i like the fact that theo has a, a lower victory point count and he's struggling a little bit because that might bring him out of his shell or his comfort zone and really make him do something incisive and now we've got something of high value on the field the t3485 um that could, could become a focal point if he's to get the faust in action get the puma in a great angle on it maybe he could take it out um, I mean, interesting to note, Dan, he's not got any Talon Mines on the field. Um, he's been starved few munitions in this game for one primary reason. He's had so many failed rifle grenades. Every single time he fires one, it's 30 munitions, and he must have missed about five by now. Um, talking of which, he's just now laying a Talon Mine. Over. I know, yeah. <laughs> there you go. But that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, he has been munition starved, and at least he's now finally able to get the Talon Mine down. Yeah. This is sensible. Um, let's not forget, he still has the biggest army on the field right now. The 85 is probably going to tip it in. Let's just have a look at the graphs. We'll be able to see this. Yeah, they're actually dead even on the graphs thanks to the 85's arrival uh, to this battle. Um, but Theo has been teching. He's gone up to battle phase 2. So we should see some tier 3 units, I imagine. Um, unless he feels confident at holding up a tier 4. I don't think that will happen. Yeah, but it would be so great. He'd need a pack 40. If you can get a pack 40, you could wait for Panther, maybe. But if he doesn't, he's going to have to go Stug. Or, uh, we've had the 2 2, two. It's been anti-tank grenaded in the top there. It should be able to get away. Meanwhile, in the center, we've got our Grenadier low on health. Very low. Just about surviving. Oh, Theo nearly lost a couple of units there. Gren's in the center, Pioneer's on the left-hand side, Scout Car on the right. He's being attacked on all three fronts right now by Talisman, who is hyper-aggressive with the vehicle advantage. Talisman doesn't seem at all keen at using this Puma against the 85. Oh, which, Theo, uh, yes, sorry, yes, yeah, is uh, not, not too keen on uh, no. bringing that up for whatever reason. He'd, well, he'd need to use it with combined arms, um, you know, he has four Grenadiers, so getting a Panzer Grenadier really isn't an option, because obviously they bleed. Um, a Pack 40 is just so the unit I would advise most mm. Wehrmacht players to build if they don't have one, you know, it's, it's almost like a, a script you could write. Does Wehrmacht player have Pack 40? If not, build one. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things that's so useful. Um, and it would just allow the Puma to be a bit more aggressive, maybe finish it off after the pack's got a good shot in and the Faust, you know, 
Um, without it, it's that T-3485 is going to ride rough shot all over his army. Um, and it's doing that just now. It's already gone to six kills, to seven kills, eight kills. Uh, yeah, it, it's not going um, too well in the center there. We can also tell that like, Theo is uh, riding the attacking button. I can see some of his Grens fighting in negative cover, so um, it, it seems like he is kind of throwing units around at the moment, trying to get territory back wherever he can. He's just come up to 320 manpower. Will we see that AT gun selected? No, we don't. He's still reinforcing in the base. I agree with you. I think that unit is, a, is an absolute must right now because Tier 3 isn't built. He can't bring out no. any uh, mobile... Uh, light vehicles, sorry, medium vehicles that can counter this. I mean, either that or get another Puma and stack Pumas. I mean, it's not to everybody's taste, but it'd at least be something. Um, because he can't just allow... But the, the infantry's a problem as well. Everything's becoming a problem for Theo again right now. Uh, he did manage to get himself back into this game with that great rifle nade earlier on, but uh, yeah, it's not going great. And there's action on all fronts. Talisman's clearly found his groove. And will we be seeing... Uh, Yarl Talisman? I don't know what a Scandinavian King is. I'll have to ask somebody. If somebody... Oh, oh nice from the... Yes, indeed. Sorry. Where? People two down. Thanks Where? to the Zis. It was firing uh, south... Uh, it's east cutoff. It was firing through the hedge for a few shots. I thought it was missing, as did Theo. Um, look away for one moment and it, it hit the two good shots it needed and took it out. One of yeah, those games is action everywhere, man. It's it's really been very aggressive from Talisman on three different fronts at the same time. That's crazy. It has, yeah. He's just playing great recovery, and I actually think Theo is is allowing this to happen. Um, this isn't something that I think you know. Have an AT gun. We normally say like what by ten minutes, really. Have an AT <laughs> yeah. gun. Yeah, this is twenty-two minutes in. The only form of AT we have now lies in the Puma. It's not an effective counter whatsoever. Um, but he is going to be pushing for tier three. He still doesn't want to. Uh, He's got to bring tier three now, now, I guess. But uh, um, the good thing yeah. is though is that when he gets uh, a vehicle out that can at least push the T thirty four eighty five away from the front line, then maybe his infantry will have a bit more success. He'll he'll not be draining as much manpower as he currently is. Ooh, T thirty four eighty five pushing in a little bit just to push the Puma away, and that's what how Talisman's feeling right now. He's feeling like a bully, but we got the Stanger shots being built, which will help a lot getting the Stug on the field. Um, but there's still that little window where two T-3485s with guards and a Zisk gun, you know, it's going to be difficult still for Theo, and he's going to have to prove he can out-micro his opponent. Um, and that has been a little bit spec in this game so far, I would say. Uh, mm. Dan, in general, how, we have watched so many top-level competitive games together now, you and I. We've discussed them, we've analysed them. Um, we may not be the best players ourselves, you know, I'm decidedly mid-ranked and you're just a little bit better than that. Um, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, not, that's not where I'm going with this. What I'm saying is, is we know, we know from watching Vermat players, like, stuff like, you know, the build orders and the pack and stuff. We know when something's not quite right, don't we? We can just feel it, you know. So yeah. We've seen so many victories over the years and so many tournament wins and it's just one of those things. Stug's coming into action down. Will he be able to make a go of it? Well, we're about to find out. It is at least a unit that can uh, that can help with the situation. Puma and Stug should do reasonably okay. Pioneer's trying to cap the center VP. Going to be contested by guards, and, and Theo is desperate for VPs right now. Uh, at a triple cap, he's going to be losing VPs very, very quickly. And uh, he has to at least get one to, uh, to give him chels uh, himself a chance at the late game. He's just getting strangled at the moment. Just look at Talisman sitting off him and taking pot shots. He's got everything behind really good light cover with great lines of sight, and he's just begging Theo to make a push. Just look at this T-3485 behind the destroyed house near the fuel point. It's just sitting there waiting, um, trying to anticipate his opponent coming out of the sh uh, his turtle shell so he can just smash him with that hammer. Yeah, it is the advantage Theo has at the moment. He doesn't have to push. Uh, could even be considered risky if he does push. Um, but these T-34s are just flying around the map. 
They're going to be pulling things like the Stug from place to place. The AT gun has just gone down. It looks like the Stug is trying to attack, move it to destroy it. Nice. And uh, Talisman can no longer recruit due to losing one of the models on the engineering nice. squad. Nice. Might be able yeah. to get the AT gun. That would be good. Oh, he's destroying it instead! <laughs> he really doesn't want to use an AT gun in this game. No. no. What does Theo have against AT? <laughs> Well, there is that mortar on the field, but, you know, this is map so kind of, you can keep it behind lines, it just help out. I just don't understand that. Never mind. I do know, like, some players don't like using AT guns. Um, what's his name? Aimstrong won't build AT guns in a competitive game. He refuses. It's just a thing. Wow. Um, people people ask why he did that really uh, spammy build in GCS, for example. Um, Grenz into Panzer. Uh, it's because he doesn't like AT guns, so... Well, it's interesting. I mean, you, you can make it work. That's the beauty of this game. And in fact, many real-time strategy games is that you can do different things. It's not you have to build an AT gun. Uh, it's just that you know, I think what we're really trying to comment on is that it seemed like a really sensible thing to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, don't hit yourself in the head with a hammer. <laughs> but I want to for stylistic reasons. Okay. <laughs> but it's my style. <laughs> Playing life on hard mode. Indeed. Again, nearly got a triple cap against him once more. He throws his grunts into the center. Elsewhere in the south, got T34 and uh, Vet3 conscripts pushing that measly pioneer away. The interesting one is, uh, oh, mine just went off from the uh, Grenadiers then, so it didn't hit the Puma, which is very fortunate. And we see the Stug trying to chase this overextended T34. Uh, 85 on the left hand side. It's got a great position behind the house. Won't be contested by the Puma and the Stug. Um, Theo's been tested here because you, you notice he's had to switch his position on the map. He's fighting so ardently for the right hand side and that has failed. Oh, and, uh, what a shot there! Jesus Christ, D3485 getting the kill on the Puma. That was a huge combo. It looked like the mortar may have helped out because the health dissipated. And now he's going in for the push. Both T3485s converging on this lowly stug, reversing away. It's done for. Yeah, that was kind of Theo's one hope. Um, what a great push by Talisman. Sadly, Mr. Puma go down, but uh, that is going to be enough for Theodosius, our current king. We have a new king for the first time in Season 2. It is Talisman. Y'all talisman hailing from Finland. That's all uh it's all bow down.